Hello, welcome to Blue Fact. Please like this video and subscribe Blue Facts. Here is my story. My M23 girlfriend of almost two years cheated on me, canceled our long planned trip, and broke up with me. How can I move on? This has been the most hurtful and unholiest trinity of things that have ever happened to me, and it happened all at once. I'm left with a sense of extreme mourning of what could have been, severe depression, and a total and utter apathy towards my life and my future. Let me provide some background. I'm at my now ex in late November of 2021. She had never been with a guy before and had just come out of an extremely toxic and abusive relationship with her ex, who was a female who, namely, cheated on her. We matched on Tinder, started talking on Snapchat, and she asked me if I wanted her to come over to my place sometime and watch a movie or something. I think we all know what that means. I agreed to meet her in town, and we hung out instead. She lives extremely close to me, only a bus stop or two away. So, she took the same bus to town as me. Side note, she has a thing for gore makeup or whatever you call it, or at least she did at the time, and she's extremely good at it. One of her Tinder pictures was from Halloween, but I genuinely wasn't sure if I was about to meet someone who had some horrific scar on the side of their entire face. But I was willing to give her a shot. True beauty is on the inside. After all, I had been grappling with the end of my previous 10-month relationship for the past 4-5 to five months. Although it concluded on a sorrowful note, it was nowhere near as tumultuous as this current situation. So, I hopped on the bus, met this woman, and initially found her a bit peculiar and idiosyncratic. After about 20 minutes in town, I was ready to dismiss the idea of pursuing anything further because her vibe didn't quite resonate with me. However, everything changed when we sat down in a coffee shop and engaged in a genuine conversation. It was like an inexplicable, immediate connection, and that completely altered my perspective on the situation. We headed back to my place, watched a movie, and had sex. From that moment on, everything was pure bliss. I loved this girl more than the world, more than myself, and I had never dared to love that much. Everything was perfect. She told me I was the best and only good person she had ever been with since she met me. She's been the happiest she's ever been in her life. We would watch movies, play games. In the winter, I'd play my guitar. We'd go out to places. Every single moment spent with her was just fantastic. We were together the rest of 2021 and all of 2022. Toward the end of 2022, we booked a small five-day trip to our capital, Stockholm, where she had never been, and had an absolutely wonderful time together. To say this girl was my life is selling life short. I met her friends, her family, her mom and dad absolutely adored me, and her dad told me on multiple occasions that he loved me. Ever since we got together, we discussed the idea of taking a trip to my hometown of Edinburgh. It's a beautiful city, and one I don't get too often due to my living in Sweden. Finally, in June of 2023, something clicked. We booked the trip, she had been working since February at that point, and I didn't really have a proper job apart from some odd jobs in the music branch. So, as a result, she paid for it all, about 30,000 Swedish kroner, and I was to pay her back half. We had arranged to meet my grandparents and they'd pick us up and drive us down to Newcastle, where they live and show her around the northeast a little for a few days. I had a very tumultuous childhood, essentially everything bad that you could imagine happening to a kid happened to me. I hadn't met my father since I was two, all this changed about a year ago, we got in touch, got chatting, and I realized he's actually a really decent man. After the trip was booked, I approached him about meeting up for the first time, which we did plan, and I was looking forward to what would have been a massive milestone in my life. So, the trip is booked, we're going to do all sorts in Edinburgh, go to the zoo, see penguins, enjoy the Edinburgh festival, celebrate my granddad's birthday, celebrate her birthday. The trip was planned to be from the 15th to the 30th of August. About a week after we booked the trip, I lay alone in my flat, hands behind my head, utterly infatuated with this girl, with a stupid gleeful grin on my face. I had decided I was going to marry this girl. She had asked on many occasions, do you want to marry me? And I had always said yes. Well, now is the time. I had never proposed or even had the thought of proposing to any of my exes. I settled on an engagement ring worth about 18,000 Swedish kroner and bought it on credit. Of course, I'm a musician after all. 
My plan was to go out to Carlton Hill on a nice day, get to the top, and then get down on one knee and propose. I had gotten the proper job as a hotel receptionist around the 10th of July, partly so that I would be able to pay my girlfriend back. I explicitly told my boss during my interview that I would not be available from the 15th to the 30th of August as I was going on this wonderful trip with my girlfriend. Therefore, they didn't give me any shifts for that period. So, I started work. It went alright, kinda meant we couldn't meet each other as often as we did when we were both unemployed or only she was working. But I figured that our relationship could bear some slight time apart. After all, we had this awesome adventure together to look forward to. And besides, we could still make time, like two to three times a week. There's a local music festival in my town that happens between the 13th and 15th of July. As a result of my shifts, I was unable to attend it with her, but I wished her a nice time. She was going out with some friends. My brain probably didn't register it at the time, but that's when she started becoming more distant. We only met two times in a span that probably would have allowed for five to six. We did spend time together, though, and that's when I got a hint of the fact that something wasn't working. She told me vague things like how she felt unsure about our relationship and how she didn't know what she wanted for her future. The kind of things I had never heard her say before, really. I mean, we both want to move out of this damn town at some point, but it wasn't that. I instinctively assumed that perhaps I had been the problem. Maybe I've taken my foot off the gas here. Maybe I don't buy her flowers as often as I used to. So, we talked, and she told me I don't want to end our relationship. We talked it out, watched some Disney movies, and things eventually felt fine again after a few days. I honestly forgot about that whole thing, a little bump in the road. So, I'm working, and there's this other music festival in the adjacent town to us, which goes on from like July 19th to 21st. Again, I was unable to go with her because of work, but I wished her a good time. Then, as I was walking home from work, something weird happened. She turned off her snap map on Snapchat. I mean, don't misinterpret me, I'm definitely not some control freak who constantly checks what she's up to, but I did happen to notice and found it quite odd as in our two years together. She had never done that. I wrote her a long message essentially along the lines of, Hey babe, I know you're at with your friends, and you're probably busy, but I just wish there was a little more communication between us as I feel that's been lacking as of late, blah blah. Love you so, so much. XOXO. Apparently, she didn't read that in the manner I had intended because it started an argument over Snapchat, which culminated in her saying, leave me alone, or something like that. I didn't really know what to make of it. I jokingly wrote to my buddies on Discord, hey, I think my GF is cheating on me. LOL, but I didn't actually, for a second, believe it. Okay, so now we're at the bad part. Sorry, you had to wait. It's the 1st of August. All this stuff is really recent memory. I've only seen her about five times since the middle of July. I need to be a better boyfriend than I am, I say to myself. I got up off my backside, went to the shops, and bought a bouquet of roses and her favorite sweets. I turned up at her place, her sister's, her parents' place, and go to a room which now has suitcases in it. I asked her to hold out her hands, etc and gave her the surprise flowers and sweets. She didn't even look happy. Man, I could feel something was up, but still not consciously. We arranged to hang out the day after the second, and on that day, she called me in the afternoon, saying, can I come to your place now? I'm on the bus. I said, yeah, sure, but I was actually planning to go to the shops and have a shower. Can't you wait? She said she couldn't, so I rushed to the shops, bought some food, then got in the shower. The doorbell rang when I was still in. She comes in and sits down and tells me she has to tell me something. I say, oh, okay, sure. Can I get dressed first? As I'm literally stood naked in front of her, getting myself dried and dressed. We sit down, and then there's a pause before she tells me, I've cheated on you. I was in total and utter disbelief. I didn't really know what to say. This, to my knowledge at least, has never happened to me before. I've only ever seen it happen in movies. I asked who it was, and she said she'd rather not say but that she cheated on me three times with the same guy. I asked the standard set of questions I've gathered one should ask in this situation. Do you love him? Is he better looking than me? Does he have a bigger? Her answer was no, no, and no. So after a long pause, I asked her, so why did you do it then? She told me, I don't know. 
She said that her and that guy are finished on that front, that she was never going to do anything like that with him again. She asked if I wanted her to leave, and after thinking about it, I said I did. So she left, my mind and heart were racing. I didn't know what to do, I couldn't even process this. I called her best friend and said, Hey, BTW, GF has told me she cheated on me. She mentioned the name of the guy, but my thoughts are all jumbled up. Who was it again? Without hesitation, she revealed his name, and I promptly called this guy. I firmly conveyed, end all contact with her immediately, or there will be serious consequences. He sounded genuinely frightened, and I disconnected the call. Here's what had unfolded. She had cheated on me, supposedly while intoxicated, with this guy. It's worth noting that he was well aware of her relationship with me. It happened first at another friend's place during the initial music festival. Then, in another town where he resided, they had another falling out, and she ended up cheating on me with him again, not once but twice. This was the most disgusting, vile, heartless, evil thing imaginable. Here I was, thinking I had done something. She later admitted I had done nothing wrong, she kept it from me for weeks and let me think I was in the wrong, and be clearly distressed and emotional about it in front of her. I cycled to her place after I called the guy and was sort of in a haze. I don't really remember what I said, but it was something like, okay, you messed up really big, but I'm gonna give you a pass this one time. We'll get on with our trip and everything will be fine again. Then she kinda said, oh, I don't know. I don't really feel like being in a relationship right now, and things to that effect. I asked her to think about it, and then I went home. Even on the bike ride home, I could kind of feel that I didn't really mean what I said. My brain was just on autopilot, damage control mode. In actuality, how could I ever forgive her for what she had done? So I sat at home and stewed about it, was almost totally unable to get to sleep for the first few days after because as soon as I lay down, my heart would start racing thinking up all the ways I was going to assault this guy. Didn't feel like eating, so I didn't. Didn't feel like doing anything. I was crushed. I talked to her on the phone and heard some quite obviously half-hearted insults and pejoratives at her. I knew she could tell in my voice that I didn't really mean what I said. I'm not that guy. After the call, I got the notification that the trip had been unbooked. I thought that perhaps she'd at least let me go on my own. Talked with all her friends that I'm friends with, talked to her sister, talked to her mom, talked to my friends, my family. I had to let my grandparents and my father down and tell them I wasn't coming on the trip after all, and they all took my side, rightly so. Apparently, she had also kissed another guy at a club at some point during our relationship, and also slept in the same bed as another guy. What the hell am I going to do? In a single moment, I lost so much, a two-year-long relationship, the opportunity to visit my aging grandparents whom I rarely get to see, the chance to reunite with my father for the first time since I was two years old, an incredible trip we had eagerly anticipated for over a year, and the painful revelation that the person I loved deeply had committed unforgivable actions behind my back. We met up around mid-August, and she came and got all her things. We ended up talking for about four hours. Can't remember what we said, though, but we mustn't have really solved anything because I still felt as though there was so much to be said. As luck or bad luck, depending on your perspective, would have it, she forgot a few things still, so we arranged to meet again, and I'd tell her everything I had been writing down in my notes during this whole time and get it all out. Yesterday, she came to my place, accompanied by a friend for support. However, I made it clear at the door that I wanted to talk privately with her, and her friend kindly agreed to wait outside. During our conversation, I didn't hold back. I expressed my feelings about her actions, the profound negative impact it had on me, the heartbreak I experienced, the trust issues it created, and how it seemed hypocritical for her to engage in the same behavior that she had condemned when we first started our relationship. I also showed her the screenshot of the order confirmation of the ring and told her my plan. I asked her why she did what she did, and she still couldn't give a straight answer. She told me that towards the end, things didn't feel the same, which I personally don't buy for a second. First of all, she never even gave me the slightest indication that anything was wrong. 
And since I know a thing or two now about how to keep a long-term relationship going, I told her right from the start and on numerous occasions that if she ever feels at any point, for any reason, that the slightest thing is wrong with the relationship or something she would like to have changed, to tell me as soon as she notices it so we can try and avoid something like that getting out of hand. The second reason I don't buy it is because who the hell books an extremely expensive trip with someone that they're not 100% sure that they want to be with. We booked it on the 29th of June and on the 13th of July. Essentially two weeks later, she had another guy's dick in her. What the hell happened during those two weeks? I asked her if she had been with another guy since she cheated on me, and she said yes, which made me feel shitty. But I've also been with another girl since the 2nd of August. She says that she has already processed all of this, that she's already mourned our relationship. She seems to view this as just an FK up, everyone FKS up. I told her, but this is orders of magnitude above that. She has seriously, seriously hurt another person, in this case, me. After chatting for about an hour and 20 minutes, she picked up her remaining things, gave me a hug, told me not to be stupid or hurt myself, I assume, and left. I removed and blocked her on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Discord, on Steam, on Facebook, and every other place. I sent her a final text message, the link to somebody that I used to know. This past month and a half has been hell. Everything I had to feel good about in life, as well as everything I had to look forward to in the future, was all taken away from me in a sentence. I still have feelings for her. I think I still love her. I think I have a tendency to let the people I love the most hurt me and get away with it. She's out meeting other guys, I know she's out partying, feeling good about things, and I'm alone most days, mindlessly scrolling on Instagram and watching YouTube until it's time to sedate myself again with sleeping pills and let the day end. I was in a loving relationship for two years. My girlfriend cheated on me multiple times and ended things abruptly, canceling a long-awaited and expensive trip together in the process. Sorry for the really long post. I wanted to give as complete and accurate a picture as possible. What do I do, guys? How do I escape complete misery? I don't think anyone has ever hurt me this badly before. Honestly, I haven't seriously considered suicide since I was a teen. But after all this, that's where my mind immediately went. Any tips or help is extremely appreciated. I just needed to get this all off my chest. Thank you for listening to the story to the end. And if you liked it, please support us with a like as well as subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you think about the story.